Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another house project. So today I am literally in the butler's pantry on the floor because it's time for the DIY dog gate. So today we are going to be building this bad boy, which keeps my puppies locked in the laundry room when I am not at home. And it is fabulous. So I bought this house and this was like the first project I did because I don't want my dogs to have to be crated, but I also can't let them have free reign in the house. Cinnamon, my baby is only under two years old and she's doing a lot better, but she still just gets in a little too much trouble. So we've got a doggy door on the back door and a dog gate for the laundry room and they have their own little area. They can hang out not get into too much trouble. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to build this. If you've never done woodworking, it is a bit of a project, but you guys, it's, I've made two now because it's not nearly as hard as you think it is. None of the steps are actually difficult. They're just tedious. It takes, takes some time, but we're going to go ahead and build it. I will show you all of the lumber that you need, all of the cuts that you need, um, I did spray this with my Wagner sprayer and you guys, I made two. So I hand painted the first one, took three coats of paint and then I sprayed the second one and it took like half an hour, one coat of paint. And I, I wash this with my little Mr. Clean magic eraser all the time because my dogs are always jumping on it. They're getting it dirty. And that one coat of paint is holding up just as good as the three I did and no brush strokes. So that's the spiel on that. We're going to go ahead and jump right into the project. I'm going to show you every single step of the way. The other gate that I built is right back here and I will show you that one. Maybe I'll even get it off of the floor. <laughs> Let's jump in. Okay guys, so first things first, you need to purchase your boards and have them cut. I had all of my straight cuts done at the store and then I took them home to put together. So the full cut list will be down in the description. We're going to jump right into making these pocket holes. As you can see, we're using three quarter inch wood and I'm just setting up the Craig jig for that. If you need help setting up your Craig jig, I have a whole uh, video on that and I'll link that below. This is just a quick overview, show, setting up the bit, setting up the dimensions for the wood. Now we're going to get started. So we need to drill pocket holes on our two vertical pieces for the front of the gate and slots A and C that puts two pocket holes on both sides of the wood. So you can see I'm drilling the one and then I'm drilling the second one. Perfect. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Voila. All right. And then I'm going to flip the board over. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other end of this board. These are the vertical boards, the vertical slats for the front. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other vertical slats so they match. I'm not going to do anything to the horizontal slats. Then I will move on to the back slats. There we go, two and two. Also, this is much easier with a shot vac, which I get later in the video, but I don't know if I ever show it to y'all. There we go. All right, so you can see two, and if we go all the way to the other end, there's the other two, perfect. Here's the second board. Go ahead and do this quick. Dun, 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 flip it over and do the other side. So my gate fits in a 35 and a quarter inch opening. If you need to adjust your size, then you can do that as well. I have a whole blog post that will help you a little more on adjusting. Now we're going to do the back slat. So this is going to be eight of these back slats. They're going to go all the way across the back of the gate and we are going to drill three pocket holes and if we have eight of these, we're going to drill three pocket holes and seven of them 
we don't need them in the eighth. So I'm doing one on each end and one in the middle. All right. And you can see one, two, three. Perfect. All right. Here's the top view. So I align it at the corner of the Craig jig. That just kind of keeps it all aligned. They don't need to be aligned. It's just nicer. And when I'm doing these single ones, I use B instead of A or C. That's really irrelevant. That's just what I like to do. Perfect. And there is the last side. You're going to drill seven of these boards like this. I'm not going to show you all seven because it gets a little redundant, but here's another one. I'm telling you guys, so much easier with the shot back. <laughs> Game changer. And I just got a little two, two and a half gallon shot back. I'll put that in the description as well. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to join them together. We're going to switch out that drill bit for the driver that comes with your Craig jig. It's a square tip, which works with the pocket holes. Perfect. All right, so you can see I have clamped to my work table the top horizontal beam, and I have the vertical one down below. We're going to use inch and a quarter pocket hole screws, 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 which are perfect for um, three quarter inch wood. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drill those together. Now you'll notice that when I start using these, they definitely pull the boards together, which is what we want. Makes it really strong. But you want to make sure, like I did at the beginning, that your boards are flush to the table and that they are straight across the top. Otherwise, when you drill them together, and you could have a bit of a change. And we'll do this on both sides. And we're making a box here, a square. Then we'll move on to the back slats. So for these, we are doing all eight of them in a row. So we're going to go ahead and drill two together here. When I'm holding them down to keep them flush, I found that was easier with these than trying to clamp them. So just make sure you're really pushing them down. Make sure they're really flush across the top. And pulls it together. Perfect. And I always like to turn it over and just make sure that it's not coming through the front. It shouldn't be. It's three quarter inch wood. But when I made two of these gates, the first one, this one that I'm showing you, worked beautifully. Same exact wood, same exact screws for the second gate but it started to come through the front a little because not all wood, even if it is supposed to be the same dimensions, is 100% the same dimensions sometimes. So I just switched to one inch screws on those and it was fine. But four quarter, three quarter inch wood, one and a quarter is almost always what you need. All right, we're gonna keep going. So, once we get to the end, we will drive that first one all the way at the bottom that I just held with my hand into a board without any pocket hole screws. Perfect. So now we have both pieces. We're going to flip over the front. We're going to mark the cross beam and then we'll cut it. Then our two layers will be done and we can put them together just like this. And I'm going to use my brad nailer to put them together. So I'm going to put two brads in each piece and then I'm going to go about two inches below those to another two brads in each piece and go all the way down the sides and through the cross beams. Perfect. Easy peasy. This video is going quickly. All right, so now we're going to move on to the finishing pieces. I'm going to put a little gooby gone on these stickers take those off before we paint it. Perfect. If this video is too fast, I've written out all the steps in detail with photos on the blog post. So the video is more of an overview, but just so you have all the different options. Okay. 
Now peel off those stickers. All right, so now we are going to use the little wooden um, pegs here. Some of these went in just fine. Some I had to really use the mallet to coax into place. And you can always put a little bit of glue on the end, but I find that nine times out of 10, I don't need them. They fit really snug. And then you can sand the tops down. So these are the wooden paint grade plugs. I'm going to put one in each and every hole. This is how you make the entire piece look like one solid door at the end and not have a million nail heads because we're going to hide them with plugs. All right. And I think I used the, the mallet on every single one on the back of this door. The other door, they fit just fine without really needing the mallet. So use your best judgment. Especially because these guys are pointy and using the mallet does tear up your mallet a bit, which is fine for me. I mean, that's what the mallet's for, <laughs> but still. That one does not want to go in, does it? There we go. Some of them definitely just go in easier than the others. Perfect. Almost done. I did not even think about the fact that when I was hitting this with the mallet, the tripod was not too far away and I was probably bouncing the camera. Should put the camera further away. All right, so now all the plugs are done. I've got my spackle, and I am going to literally fill all of those brad nail holes, which, as you can see, are considerable. I go all the way on the ones we did around the outside, and then, of course, the ones we did through the X in the middle of the board. And then I'm going to come in with my little hand sander, I'm going to sand those wooden pegs smooth so that when we paint it, it looks like one unified piece. And when I see that little hand sander, it makes me want to put googly eyes on it. Like how Evan and Caitlin have googly eyes. Have you ever watched their channel? I totally get why they do that. I'm just filling in all the holes, then make sh making sure it's smooth. You can add spackle around the sides of the pegs if they're not fitting um, perfectly flush from corner to corner. Some of them will, some of them will need a little spackle. You're just going to have to play it by ear, guys. googly eyes would be so much better. Also, that fly is killing me.
these close ones, you can kind of see the holes disappear. I mean, those brad nails are pretty tiny, but still, there's a lot of holes. And there's no reason not to spackle them. Looks so much better afterwards. And I did find with the sander that um, medium grade sandpaper for about 10 seconds on each peg sands it down fairly flat. You can always finish after that with a bit of fine sandpaper if you like. There's some of these on this top corner. These were the worst, as in they stuck out the most. I'm not sure why, but they did. So they took a little bit more sandy, but as you can see, not much. Wipe everything off. Perfect. Finish off those pigs with some spackle. Gotta get a picture in. And now we're gonna paint. So I've got my um, Wagner Flexio here and I'm using the small little fine finish barrel because the board's already primed. Adjusting the nozzle so that it's going to spray the direction I want. And I always pull the trigger and spray paint through the machine away from my project. That way we know it's flowing out evenly before we start spraying onto our piece. When you first start to spray through the machine, it can spit out just air and junk. You don't want that on your piece. So now we're going to hold it about 8 to 10 inches away, and you want to spray off your piece. So see how I'm starting in the air, spraying all the way across, and then going off the piece? If you start on the piece and finish on the piece, you'll have a lot more build up on the two edges than you will in the middle of your project. So always spray off your piece. That way you get full coverage from side to side. I'm just working my way across the entire piece. I made sure to hit the bottom really well, the sides really well. Perfect. And these are thin coats. So I'll do two or three. You want to make sure they overlap a little. So perfect. Mom's going to come take a picture. Finish it off, make sure you get the top. Just checking the paint there. I put a whole quart of paint in the can and I think I used about a fourth of it, which is the best part of this little Wagner guy. You don't have to thin your paint. This is chalk paint, so it's thick and I put it directly in the machine. It works just fine, it covers just fine. And for both sides, full coverage, I probably used about a quarter of the quart, which I've gone through way more with other sprayers that just about eat that paint. All right, we're gonna let that sit for about 20 minutes and then we're gonna come back and do the front of the gate. We did the back first. Perfect. And as you can see, I am painting right next to my house and I'm not really worried about overspray. This little gun, you can control the spray on top of it. It goes from like one to eight and it shows you little pictures of this should be for furniture. This should be for your house. But the overspray is very minimal. At the end of the day, it just basically did right around the box. I'm wearing good jeans and good shoes and a paint shirt. So probably should have done that the other way around. But I didn't have any overspray on my shoes or jeans when I was done. So it's definitely very controlled. All right, mom tells me there's a weed on it. Perfect. We'll let it dry and then we can start attaching the hardware. So we started with the wheels. We're gonna mark where they go. Perfect. <laughs> Make sure you get a picture. You don't need one if you're not doing this for a blog post. <laughs> All right, once it's marked, we're going to pre-drill those holes. 
especially when you're going into the wood with the grain like these wheels are you want to pre-drill otherwise if you just drill straight in you can split the wood and you don't want to split the wood after sanding and spackling and painting and making it beautiful Get rid of that sawdust and now we will actually put the little wheels on. Alright and while mom does that one I'm just going to start hand screwing the screws in a little bit that way it's easier to add with the power drill. Mom is having problems. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're gonna lay it down and then we will do the hinges, same fashion. So we're gonna put them on. Just make sure that they are in the right place and then mark where the screws go. Perfect. We'll pre drill those. Pre drilling is a bit of a pain in the butt, guys, but it really is the best way to attach anything. Perfect. And now we'll put the hinge on. And you definitely want these to be heavy duty hinges. Like this gate is, it's pretty heavy. The, the wood all put together, it's not exactly light. And it does have wheels, so it's resting on the wheels. It's not free hanging from the hinges. But especially since it's hanging and there will be dogs and or children <laughs> trying to get out of it. If your animals or kids are anything like my dogs, um, let's just say Cinnamon thinks this dog gate is nothing more than something for her to jump on and howl, say, Mom, let me out. All right, so now we are gonna have to take the gate back to the laundry room where we're going to actually install it. So last but not least, we'll put the little handle on. Oh, she's, she's really struggling with that power drill. To be fair, she came over to help and decided she needed to be in charge of the power drill. Just not always the best decision, but makes her happy so there you go she's not hurting anything i 
And if you've watched any of my videos, you know, mom, mom can build some stuff. All right. Now we've got into the laundry room. We marked through the hinge where we need to pre-drill our holes. And we're going to mount this to the frame of the door. Now you can either mount it directly to the frame or you can mount it through a board if you need a little more um, width to your gate. You can always cut one of your back slats so that it's the perfect size. We decided not to do that. So after attaching this to the door frame, we ended up taking it off, installing a board to make it a little wider, and then installing the dog gate to the board. You can see that in the finished pictures. Perfect. All right, now we put the gate in place and we will drill the gate directly to the door jam. There we go. Works better when the drill's going the right way, don't you think? <laughs> There we go. Definitely a little wobbly without that bottom screw. There we go. Pulls it flush, much better. So now we're gonna add the latch on the back. Obviously you'll do the bottom hinge same as the first. And we're going to make sure it's flush on the side. Mark the screws. We need to put two screws for this one. One on either side. Perfect. I finally got the drill away from mom. This is literally the only screws she let me do for the entire project. No, I did all the Craig juice screws. She wasn't here for that, so I was fine. <laughs> She's scared of the Craig jug, even though it's so easy to use. And it probably would have been easier to attach this latch when it was laying down, but we wanted to be sure exactly where we wanted to put it. The drill just keeps kicking, doesn't it? There we go. And now we will move on to doing the, the little cover for the latch so that we have something for it to slide into. Perfect. wearing her Girl Scout shirt. 
Fun fact, I was a Girl Scout all the way from daisies, brownies, all the way up to, to seniors, all the way through high school. And mom was my troop leader for most of it. You'll notice that we do have washers for these because even though they give you screw heads, they didn't seem like they would really hold this in place very well. So I added some washers. Made me feel better. All right. So once this is done, we are finished and I will show you the finished gate and how it works and its brother across the laundry room. All right, ready for a quick tour. So here's the first gate with the full farmhouse X on the front. We've got this little handle that is mainly decorative. Let's be honest, I mainly grab it by the top. We've got the hinges. These are heavy duty. And of course we've got this beam on the side. Now that is 120% optional, but I did not want to slice the back slats with my miter saw down smaller. So this was just a quick and easy way, I know baby, to adjust the width of the gate so that it hangs center and not off to one side without cutting that back slat. So on the other side, you can see we don't have any screw holes. We don't have any screw heads. It basically reads as one piece. You can see, of course, where we Craig jigged everything if you look hard enough, but the paint pretty much unifies everything. This is the gate that I hand painted and you can see just gets a little dirtier than the other one. The coverage on this one is just like 120% better. It doesn't get nearly as dirty because the finish is smoother. It's the same exact paint. One coat versus three. I am obsessed. And since this is a smaller gate, we did not do the farmhouse X, although you could. Um, I like how it looks both ways. And this way they coordinate, but they're not identical. And I will eventually add a magnet closure to this one. But since this is just keeping things away from the dogs, it is less important to be as sturdy. They don't really jump on this one like they do the other one. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. What do you think? Quick, easy, they look great. I can hide my crap. I mean, by very useful cleaning supplies and dog food. Right back here. I am eventually going to put a tabletop over this and make this way more organized. This whole laundry room needs a major major makeover. I'm talking like full belt ends on the other side. Biddy, stop that. But in the meantime, I love how these gates turn out. I'm going to add a magnetic closure to this one so that it can actually close to the washer machine. But with my little dogs, they don't really come back here at all. Come here, Biddy. She just has to be part of the video. Oh, and Coco too. <laughs> All right. So if you like this project, like, comment, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell. Biddy and I will be back in the next video. Bye y'all. Seriously guys, seriously guys.